In Pokemon Go, Mega Pidgeot and Tri-Attack Porygon Z aren't exactly the best raid attackers in the game. I mean, they're not terrible, they're definitely passable, but they're not hashtag optimal. Well, I have recently discovered that the combination of these two Pokemon, Mega Pidgeot and Porygon Z, could take Porygon Z's power even further beyond what we thought it was and possibly make it the greatest raid attacker in all of Pokemon Go. So if you want the details on this specific combo, well, uh, that's what this video is about. That's what you're watching today. Before you can understand why Porygon Z is so powerful in this combo, you have to first understand the nuance of Mega Pidgeot. Now when it comes to Mega Evolutions in general, when they're in raids, they give a 10% damage to all Pokemon damage types. Every single ally you have, your Pokemon included, gets a 10% bump to their damage just because a Mega Evolution is there. Now this only applies for a single Mega Evolution at a time, so if two Mega Evolutions were to be present on the field at the same time, they wouldn't stack their 10% bonuses, but as long as there's just one, you get that 10% bonus. The result of this is, is that just about any Mega Evolution can be an optimized raid attacker in just about any raid because they're boosting their allies' damage. Mega Pidgeot may not be the most optimized fire type raid attacker, but because it is boosting the damage of all of its water, ground, and rock type allies by 10%, well, its presence being there will allow you guys to defeat the raid faster than you would otherwise. Now, of course, using a Mega Blastoise could make this process go even better because it's boosting water type damage and it's a water type attacker itself, but Mega Blastoise costs 40 Mega Energy in order to Mega Evolve. Mega Pidgeot only costs 20 Mega Energy. So even though it could be more optimal to use one specific Mega Evolution or another for a specific type of raid, are you really going to burn 40 Mega Energy of your precious, limited, Mega Charizard Y energy on some scrub no-name raid, or would you much rather use the Mega Pidgeot energy? To keep in the back of your mind here, all these raids are going to be on rotation, so you won't have infinite access to any single one of these raids. It might not be the best idea to burn that precious mega energy, that limited resource, on a quote-unquote unworthy raid. Or maybe a raid where it doesn't necessarily need you to use that level of Pokemon, Mega Pidgeot, has it handled. I feel like that rant went a little bit off the wagon there, but to just give you a little recap, Mega Pokemon being there gives 10% damage to all allies, including itself, so even if it isn't super effective to the raid boss target, it being there collectively just makes it good, a optimized raid attacker, as long as there isn't a secondary Mega Evolution. And the reason why you'd want to go for Mega Pidgeot compared to like a Mega Charizard Y, for example, is that, you know, it's only 20 Mega Energy to Mega Evolve. Uh, compared to 40, so it's more economical. And then you can save your Mega Charizard energy for a raid that demands it, where Pidgeot's a little bit more, you know, the, the everyday kind of Mega Evolution. So now that we understand how Mega Pidgeot is a reasonable raid attacking Pokemon to use in just about any single raid, uh, well, what's going on with Porygon Z? When it comes to Porygon Z and Shadow Porygon Z, they're two of the most powerful normal type raid attackers in the game. The reason why we don't really hear about them so much though is because normal type damage isn't very useful in raid content. The reason why is because normal type attacks don't have any super effective targets. Super effective damage gets a 60% multiplier, a 1.6 multiplier, if you will, uh, making just about any super effective raid attacker better than an optimized Porygon Z. The game has changed ever so slightly now that we have a Mega Same Type bonus. Basically, if you send out a Mega Charizard Y, which is a Fire and Flying type Pokemon, then the damage of all Fire and Flying type attacks gets this 30% multiplier applied to it. So if you have a Mega Pidgeot out, for example, a flying and normal type Pokemon, well then normal type attacks experience this 30% bump. Now 30% isn't as good as 60%, I mean, it's kind of like half of it, right? But things get even spicier when you consider the weather bonus, or in this case, partly cloudy weather. The weather bonus is only 20%, so that's not all that impressive. 
But when you combine the mega same type bonus with a weather bonus, you get 1.56. The reason why it's 1.56, not 1.5, is because these bonuses are multiplicative, not additive. So that's just how it works out. Now, 1.56 isn't greater or equal to 1.6, but it's pretty dang close. And because Porygon Z, and uh, more specifically Shadow Porygon Z, because they have a more offensively oriented stat line, this can put them above most optimal rate attackers, just by virtue of them having the bonuses, the stats, and the attacks to just be better than them. Don't believe me? Then just check out the comprehensive DPS TDO spreadsheet on GamePress. You can see here that Shadow Porygon Z B, which implies that it's getting the Mega Boost, is higher than even Mega Mewtwo Y in performance. Top of the list, no other Pokemon would have greater DPS than Shadow Porygon Z under these circumstances. Now to clarify why you might not be able to make this appear on your own specific spreadsheet, uh, we do have the partly cloudy weather bonus happening right now, so all normal and rock type attacks are getting boosted by the partly cloudy weather, 20%. And right now the DPS TDO spreadsheet doesn't have an option to apply specific mega bonuses, that 30% boost. Uh, so I just went in and I multiplied Porygon Z and Shadow Porygon Z's attack stat by 30%. So while it isn't the most precise way to display this type of boost, it is uh, the most accurate way we have to display it right now. And uh, as you can tell, Shadow Porygon Z better than Mega Mewtwo Y. Now of course this is ignoring Mega Mewtwo Y's own Mega Bonus to Psychic type attacks, right? Uh, it doesn't have the 30% multiplier either, so in practice, obviously Mega Mewtwo Y boosting its own Psychic type attacks would be better than Shadow Porygon Z, but in practice, Mega Mewtwo Y existing at the same time as Shadow Porygon Z in the first place uh, would already make, you know, this whole idea less optimal because Mega Pidgeot becomes less of a good idea because there's a second Mega Pokemon present. So we could go down that whole rabbit hole, but uh, for the sake of comparison, you can tell that Shadow Porygon Z here is kind of a boss. I mean, if you really want a comparison, here's Shadow Mewtwo, the uh, best Pokemon that money can buy right now. Uh, you can't actually buy it anymore. You could buy it though for GoFest. And um, yeah, Shadow Porygon Z, better than Shadow Mewtwo, under these specific circumstances. And then here's normal Porygon Z, not a Shadow, and uh, just behind Shadow Mewtwo. So, you know, that uh, Shadow bonus definitely goes a long way. I think you guys get it. Shadow Porygon Z with the Mega Bonus and the Weather Bonus is pretty freaking strong. But exactly how well does it do in raids? Checking out monotype raid bosses, so raid bosses that only have one type associated with them, uh, Porygon Z is effective in about seven of them with this particular type of combo. Those types of raids are gonna be electric, dark, normal, fairy, water, ground, and psychic type raids. The reason why this type of combo isn't optimized in those other types of raids is uh, typically because, you know, rock type damage is super effective or flying type damage is super effective that or normal type damage is resisted. So those are reasons why Porygon Z isn't optimal in every single stinking type of raid imaginable. As far as every single type of raid imaginable goes, um, yeah, apparently there's uh, 153 different type combinations in the Pokemon universe. So yeah, I only looked at mono type raid bosses, only one single type of raid boss. Of course, there's, uh, I guess, 153 different combinations. Uh, this is kind of a meme idea. Only the true Porygon Z enthusiasts would ever think of undertaking all of this nonsense. And uh, I guess I'm not that hyped about Porygon Z where I want to go over like 153 different simulations, right? Now there are two important highlights that come with the seven types of raids that Porygon Z is most effective in. Uh, first up, you have dark and normal type raids, ones where fighting type Pokemon are effective. When it comes to dark and normal type raid bosses, uh, fighting types kind of have the game on lock here. Shadow Porygon Z, with all these bonuses, is still worse than Shadow Machamp would be against normal and dark type raids. In fact, with these bonuses, Shadow Porygon Z, with the tri-attack of course, is only as good as like normal Lucario is, which is impressive in some way, but not that impressive, right? And then as far as normal Porygon Z is concerned, it's roughly on the level of normal Machamp. 
So if you were to be up against a normal or dark type raid boss with no other types fooling around here to mess with the algorithm a little bit, um, well, then yeah, going with your fighting type squad would probably be the best idea. However, if you were to be up against a, you know, dark flying type raid boss or like a dark fairy type raid boss, well, that would render the fighting type damage to be neutrally effective, which would put it on the same playing field as Porygon Z, making Porygon Z much more viable. Of course, with the partly cloudy and the mega Pidgeot bonus, of course. Conversely, we have electric type raids. And uh, given the circumstances of ground type Pokemon, the only type that is super effective to electric type Pokemon, um, yeah, Shadow Porygon Z, the boosted one of course, right, but the boosts happen in, is uh, better than basically everything we have in the game right now. Two reasons for this are A, ground type attacks really aren't that good for raids. The best charge move we have for raids is Earthquake. Earthquake is a single bar charge move, and single bar charge moves just aren't that good in raid practice because of like energy waste, right? So you get to that point where you wanna launch the charge move. You finally make it to 100 energy, and then you faint. Or you get to 70 energy, and you faint right? So single bar charge moves aren't all that intuitive for raids, and that definitely holds ground type Pokemon back. Another thing holding ground type Pokemon back is the fact that they don't have any effective shadow Pokemon. Like they got shadow Flygon. Flygon isn't exactly an optimized ground type attacker. If we were to get like, I don't know, shadow Excadrill or something, well then yeah, maybe a shadow ground type Pokemon would be above shadow Porygon Z, uh, but because that is absent, I guess we have to wait for Mega Garchomp or Primal Groudon to come out to have something to really challenge Shadow Porygon Z's prowess against electric type raid bosses. To make this swag a little bit awkward though, uh, electric type Pokemon resist flying type attacks and Mega Pidgeot only has flying type attacks, so this would definitely hurt Mega Pidgeot's raid viability. I mean, if you have enough allies with you in the raid, like the 10% damage bonus to everybody could make up for Mega Pidgeot, but it's kind of far-fetched, right? You might just be better off just, I don't know, throwing your Rhyperiors at this thing and leaving Shadow Porygon Z at home. Of course, if we ever do get a different Mega Pokemon, such as like Mega Idino or Mega Lapunny, which also give a normal type bonus, well then Shadow Porygon Z might see a little bit more action in electric type raids. Now another important thing to note with these effective raids for Porygon Z, it would be even better if it had a super effective hidden power type for the raid. However, you'll see that the ones I have simulated only use lock-on. Well, the reason why is because I multiplied its attack stat by 30% in order to make up for that 30% buff. The Mega Pidgeot buff wouldn't be affecting the hidden power types, but the way that I'm running it right now, it would affect the hidden power types, which would be inaccurate, right? Uh, so even though I can't visualize it here for you accurately, you could imagine that if you're up against a electric type raid boss using a hidden power ground Porygon Z for instance, it would be even better than displayed here. But I can't really display it here for you until we get a mega functionality worked into the DPS TDF spreadsheet. With that said, there is another way to take Porygon Z's power even further beyond what's shown on the spreadsheet. And this! What's he doing? Is to go even further beyond! If you sort normal type charge attacks by their damage per second times their damage per energy, which is a useful metric to determine an attack's overall goodness when it comes to raids, uh, you'll see that Hyper Beam turns out to be better than both Return and Tri Attack on paper. So if Hyper Beam is a better attack than Return or Tri-Attack are, well how come these two attacks are the ones that are making the moveset as the number one attack on the DPS TDO spreadsheet? Why isn't it Hyper Beam? Well the reason why is because Hyper Beam is a single bar charge move. So if you were to charge over 50 energy and your Pokemon were to faint, well then it would have been smarter to use a Tri-Attack or a Return instead of trying to charge up for Hyper Beam. Similarly, if you charge up to like I don't know, 70, 80 energy on your Hyper Beam, and you get hit by the opponent's, you know, charge attack, which gives you like, I don't know, 60, 70 energy from the damage, well, that's overflow energy, right? You can only cap 
at 100 energy. You don't get like the extra 20 schniblets or whatever. So that is another opportunity cost to using a single bar charge move, where if you were to throw a tri attack, for example, well, then you'd have like 10, 20, 30, 40 energy. You get hit by that big attack, which gives you energy because you took damage, and then you'd get up to like 70 or 80 energy. Well, you can convert that into a charge attack right away without any energy waste. So overall, Hyper Beam, single bar charge moves in general, aren't very intuitive for raids. And the way that the comprehensive DPS TDO spreadsheet is designed, these single bar charge moves end up getting punished because of this circumstance. Well, one thing that the DPS TDO spreadsheet doesn't account for is having two charge moves unlocked on your Pokemon. If your Shadow Porygon Z were to have both Hyper Beam and Tri Attack, it could benefit from both worlds. So you could charge up to a Hyper Beam, throw a Hyper Beam, and then the moment you start to feel like your Porygon Z might faint from another attack, well that's when you start rattling off the tri attacks so you don't waste energy trying to charge up to another Hyper Beam. Now how much of a difference does this type of combo make in practice? It's really hard to say, but if you're eyeballing something like the DPS TDO spreadsheet, I'd say it'd probably account for maybe a half DPS. Now 0.5 DPS isn't a whole lot, but uh, it's not a little bit either, you know? And uh, if you are a true Porygon Z enthusiast, well, this Hyper Beam plus Tri Attack or Return combo may be something you want to look into. Now, at the end of the day, this combo is pretty goofy. I mean, Mega Pidgeot, not even you using it, but you have an ally using it with a specific weather type to get this benefit against, I guess, a limited amount of raid bosses, it sounds pretty extreme for just like a little bit of extra damage. And it is pretty insane, right? But I know that you Porygon Z enthusiasts are out there scooping this information up, coordinating with your friends as I speak, and it also represents the greater power of Mega Evolutions. Not just the Mega Evolutions themselves, but the bonuses that they give themselves and their allies in combat allowing them to rival even super effective damage for some raids. So today, it's Mega Pidgeot comboed with Porygon Z and partly cloudy weather. Who knows what the future may hold. If you got any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you want to support the Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. Not just Mega Evolutions as a powerful Pokemon themselves, but the bonuses that they give their allies in raid battle, making those Pokemon even further powerful than they'd be normal, yes.